Alright folks, welcome back to the Gen X Gamer. I am Karak Alvaron and today we are in Elder Scrolls Online. Today I have a unique video for you, not one that I normally do on the channel. This is a build video for the Elder Scrolls Online for a Nightblade Bowmaster slash Executioner slash Ganker. Um, this is my Nightblade that I play in Elder Scrolls PvP, and I use exclusively use a bow on this character. Uh, no melee at all. So what we're going to do here is, is I'm going to go in depth on the character build, um, show you the sets, show you the skills, explain the passives, the whole nine yards, give you everything. It, in the description below, I'm going to link to uh, three or four live streams that I've done on YouTube that show me playing this build. So you'll be able to see it in action if that's what you want to see. Um, there's plenty of footage in there and I show everything. So, you know, hopefully that'll give you a really good picture of what I'm doing here. So before I get going, let me say thank you. Thank you for taking your time to watch my content. I really appreciate it. Please remember to like, subscribe, share. All that stuff really helps the channel out. and I appreciate the support. So the first thing we'll do is just take a look at the, the raw stat sheet, okay? Um, 64 points into stamina. Max Magicka is nearly 19k, max health is 24, max stamina is nearly 30. Not bad. Recoveries are pretty low. I am a vampire, so you have very little health recovery. Um, weapon damage is 5k unbuffed. Crit 35%, and the pen is about 11k. The resistances are meh. So this is a one bar build. I am using the Oaken Soul Ring. Now the Oaken Soul Ring has been nerfed a lot. However, there are still a many, many positives that you're getting from that. Okay, um, you're getting major, major savagery, which is increases your uh, weapon critical by 12% which is great, um, and increasing your crit rating by 2629, getting major brutality, which is a 20% increase in weapon damage, therefore you don't have to run rally, which is fantastic. Heroism is fantastic because you get um, one ultimate. Um, you get the minor endurance, minor force, which increases your critical damage by 10%. Um, you're getting minor intellect, which is a magicka recovery. Minor Mending, which increases your healing done. Uh, minor Fortitude. Minor Slayer, which is a Dungeon and Trial buff. It's really not helping us out here in Cyrodiil. Um, same with Aegis, that's not helping us. in Power increases your damage done with heavy attacks against monsters. It doesn't really help us out here. We're getting Major Resolve, which is nice. We're getting Minor Courage, which is increasing our weapon and spell damage. Um, overall, Oaken Soul is still a really, really good mythic item to have, okay? Now, you do have to purchase a DLC to get this. Um, I was one of the many who got it when it first came out, and I was using it when it was at its peak, and it was just insane. Um, it's still a really, really good ring. It's a, it's a good mythic. However... The downside is, is it only enables you to use one bar. I can't weapon swap. So I'm stuck on one bar. So I literally have six skills that I can use here on this build. Um, now, as an alternative to this, there is another mythic that I run, and it's the Ring of the Wild Hunt. Okay, you can see the Open Soul Ring over here. Um, the Ring of the Wild Hunt is, uh, is phenomenal for the speed. But uh, Open Soul is just, there's so many buffs to Open Soul. I can't not use it. Um, it. Is it OP? I don't know that it's OP. It was OP. I don't know that it is now. And if I were running in groups, I could probably get a lot of these buffs elsewhere. But I'm going to be honest with you. The Oaken Soul Ring and the one bar build is just very simple to run. It's easy to run. Okay. Um, but the other thing that we get here is is... We also have a couple of other sets that help us. Now, before I get too deep into the sets, let me go into the skills because it's very important, okay? 
So, in Elder Scrolls Online, one of the important things that you have, the first important thing you have to do when you're starting a class is, is you have to decide what, what, what race you're going to be. For a Nightblade right now at this time, it's, Khajiit is probably the best in slot. No, some people may say Wood Elf, okay. But Khajiit just has Feline Ambush. And Feline Ambush is increase your critical damage and critical healing by 12%. That's big. On top, top of the Oak and Soul um, buff that we're getting, uh, we're getting pretty good crit damage. Okay, we could even make this higher if I wanted to. Okay, but we're not, and I'll explain that in a minute. Um, it decreases your uh, radius, uh, your stealth radius by three meters, your detection radius by three meters. Um, that's actually pretty good as well. We we are in stealth quite a bit. Um, you're getting Lunar Blessing, which it just increases your... It's a raw stat increase, which is nice. Um, and you're getting uh, Robustness, which just helps your um, recoveries, which is also nice. <laughs> Cut Purse is really just a... Kind of... That's more for leveling. But uh, it, it, we're really here for Feline Ambush. So that's why we're going with Khajiit. So that's your first big decision. Next, you're going to want to go with pick a weapon or a couple of weapon types. I, I'm using exclusively a bow on this, and I always have. And I've been playing this this tune for a long time with just a bow. Okay, so let's take a look at what the skills actually are on the bow. Number one, the thing that you have to remember with the bow is, is that most of the morphs for the bow allow you poison damage. Okay, poison damage is very, very important for this build because of one of the sets that we're using. Lethal Arrow is is the opener for this particular build. Now, Lethal Arrow is it, it, it's a poison damage skill. It applies the poison status effect, but it also puts Minor Defile on them, which reduces their healing for four seconds. Uh, their healing received and their health recovery by 8% for 4 seconds. Now, in and of itself, 4 seconds isn't a lot. However, the way the snipe mechanic works for Elder Scrolls Online is, is you're, you're shooting one shot. Okay, there's an animation. That's in the air, and you're, and you're already hitting the second one. Okay, so what's really happening is, is you're getting two shots in at the same time. Well, let me rephrase that. You're getting two shots in before the first one has hit. So by the time the first one's hitting, you're already almost done with the animation for the second shot. It's already on the target, so you're almost always guaranteed to get two shots in directly. Now, they can dodge it or they can miss, but that more often than not, you're going to get at least one of them to hit. And then... What that means is, is you can sit there and spam. If it's somebody that's um, just like on a siege equipment at a, at, a, at a keep, you can just sit there and keep pumping out lethal arrows. If it's somebody riding by and they're on the horse, you can usually get three of them off by the time they recover from being dismounted. So lethal arrow is the bread and butter of this particular build. But what's important for the bow is, is to understand that almost the three skills that we're using here, which are only three offensive... Well, there are the three main offensive skills we use all have poison abilities. Toxic Barrage, it's a channel skill. It's got a huge range of 41 meters, but, I mean, you're doing 92,000 poison damage over four seconds. Okay? After dealing damage, you poison the enemy, dealing an additional 45,000 poison damage over eight seconds. You can move at full speed and are immune to all disabling effects while channeling this attack. Toxic Barrage is a really, really powerful ranged ultimate. It's not the most powerful ultimate out there, but it's pretty powerful. But again, we're doing poison damage. And then, this is the execute, poison injection. You shoot an arrow coated in Bandari poison at an enemy, dealing 6,000 poison damage and an additional 17,500 over 20 seconds. It deals up to 120% more damage to enemies under 50% health. That's very important because there's different executes in the game. And the executes increase in damage based on how much health your opponent 
has lost, right? This one's actually a fairly high threshold. A 20% damage increase under 50% health. Remember, you're getting those two snipes off. Oftentimes, if you've got somebody who's under 30k health, those two snipes are going to drop them by 15 to 20k. Then you can start spamming this poison injection, and it's going to be doing 6,000 poison damage initially. Um, it's going to be doing about an, a, a 7k hit, depending on, on the, the um, mitigations of your opponent. But you can sometimes get an instant kill on this as well. Uh, you just it can crit and if it crits and you're getting the hunt uh the 20 percent damage increase on the 6k um i've seen a couple of these they're they're up around 9 10k which is really really nice on a crit and it's putting another poison dot on them and after lethal arrow you've also got minor defile on them often where their health recovery and, and their healing is reduced so it's a really potent hit here Okay, now the nice part about bow is this bow gives you something that a lot of the others don't give you. A lot of the other weapons don't give you. It gives you hasty retreat. Now hasty retreat grants you major expedition for four seconds after you use a roll dodge. Okay, um, that's actually really, really good skill for a bowman because you're hitting at range. If it doesn't work out, if you know the person's able to dodge it or it's a real real heavy tank and they absorb the damage and, and are coming in at you you can roll dodge and then boom you've got major expedition for four seconds which increases your speed um, that's a really big advantage for the bow and particularly when you're fighting at range this gives you the ability to, to uh, reposition yourself pretty quickly Hawkeye is nice dealing damage with lighter. Heavy attack increases the damage of your bow abilities by 5% for 5 seconds, stacking up to 5 times. Um, this really becomes prevalent when you're in a keep situation and you're defending. You hear a lot of people in Elder Scrolls Online in Cyrodiil saying, you know, light attack botards from the roof. Okay, um, they get pissed at that. But what a lot of them don't realize is is that those light attacks are stacking Hawkeye. That's an additional 5% damage. Um, you can get up to 25% increase in damage. Um, I, I've done this myself, you know, multiple light attacks, just spamming that on a group of people that are um, on, a, on a siege engine in the, at the front of a keep. You got your Hawkeye buff going, and then you get into stealth, and then start spamming some snipes. You can get some pretty big hits there. Um, Ranger just reduces the cost of your bow abilities by 15%. That's good because it helps counter one of the sets that we're using, which actually increases the cost of skills. So this is a nice counter to that. Um, this accuracy is just uh, increases your crit chance, which is nice. Long shots gives a damage, gives you a damage bonus for 12% against enemies at longer range. So again, um, there's nothing here to not like about the bow. Everything is is supporting really good bow play and really good long range sniper play, particularly with hasty retreat. Um, it, it, it really is, um, the bow is a really solid weapon if you commit fully to the bow play style. If you're using it as an off weapon, uh, many of these aren't really going to help you. You're probably using, you know, your two-handed or whatever else you're doing, uh, maybe dual wield as your primary offensive weapon. You want to use those passives. You want to build around those passives. But if you're a pure bow user, um... The bow passives are really good. So we've established what what race we want to be. We've established why we're using the bow. Now, we're using a night blade because we really want to use the shadow ability of shadowy disguise. Because shadowy disguise gives us um, cloak yourself in shadow to become invisible for three seconds. Now, let's just digest that sentence now for a minute. That sentence alone is what enables a night blade to get in and out of trouble. That's your main escape. That's your main defensive play. Okay, your next direct damage attack, 
used within three seconds will always be a critical strike. So what you're doing is, is you're using shadowy disguise, you're coming out of stealth, you're shooting a, um, you're shooting a lethal arrow, you're putting minor, def so it's going to crit automatically, you're going to get the minor defile on them, and then your second lethal arrow is already released, and then you're going to start hitting them with poison injections. It's a really potent punch. Okay. Now, the, the passives for Shadow are also very important. Okay. Now, most of these are are you're gonna get these as a Nightblade regardless of what you run. Okay. But what we really want is is the Shadow Barrier casting a Shadow ability grants you major resolve for six seconds. Now, this is for people that aren't using Oaken Soul. Okay, Oaken Soul already gives you this, but if you don't have Oaken Soul, you're using Shadow Barrier, uh, that passive, every time you use Shadowy Disguise, you're getting uh, increased physical and spell resistance. So you're going into stealth, you're getting um, major resolve. That's why you want this Shadow ability, because it's it's really your major defensive uh this is this is how you're getting a good defensive buff on this on this offensive build. And if you're using any heavy armor pieces, it increases the uh, the bonus. I'm I happen to not be, but some people like to run the 511 or 522 whatever. I'm using all medium. Okay. Um so shadow is is really good. We really want that on here. Now, we also go to siphoning. Now, siphoning is is m normally used by ma mage blades, magicka based knight blades, okay? And the reason they're using that is is because most of this like strife morphs into um I can't remember is it swallow soul which is a, f a pretty good spammable actually. It heals you when you're doing damage. But soul tether is really the big morph here. This is, you know, this is a this is what the bomb, a lot of nightblade bombers are running. Okay, we're using it because we're it is shrewd offering, and we want this heal. Now shrewd offering was not always this good. Okay, and you're using it for a couple of reasons. Is number one, you're getting a a spike heal. Okay, now we know that we already have good magicka pool. Okay, we're getting that good magical pool, number one, because we're a Khajiit. Um, and we've got a couple of other um, buffs going on here that, that gives us a little bit more of a magical pool, and, I'll, and we'll go over those. But basically, what most stamina classes are using for their help, for their for their um, heal is they're, they're in the Assault line, and they're using Resolving Vigor. Now, Resolving Vigor is a really nice uh, heal over time. And it's and you're getting minor resolve from it as well when you use it. So, resolving vigor is an excellent heal. This is almost a flex spot. I I don't consider it a flex spot myself. I consider that you want shrewd offering because what's happening is is shrewd offering is part of the siphoning line. Which where is it? Um. You're getting Magicka Flood. So increases your max Magicka by 8% while a siphoning ability is slotted. So um, we're using we're using it for that, for that passive, okay? Because when we're using Shadowy Disguise, we're using Magicka, okay? And that's why our Magicka pool is pretty decent at 19k. Um, because we have Shrewd Offering, we're getting in this, the Magicka Flood, which is an extra 8% of max Magicka. Those are the only two Magicka skills that we're using. One of them is our big heal. The other one is to get into Cloak and into um, Invisibility, which is our major defense. So our defense and our heal, we need as much Magicka as we can get. That's the reason why I'm using Shrewd Offering as my heal here. But a lot of people will use um, Resolving Vigor. There's nothing wrong with that. You're going to be relying on your Stam Pool. And if you're if you're pulling your stamp pool down with resolving vigor uh, heals, you're going to have less stamina to to go offensive. So there's a trade-off. It's really this is a play balance issue. You're going to have to figure that out. Now the other class line that we're 
we're using, we're not using currently is the assassination line. The assassination line, this is where you get a flex spot. This, this skill I have here, silver shards, and I'll explain why I have it in a minute, is the flex skill. I'm currently running this. And like I said in the beginning of the video, all of the streams that you'll see that are linked that show this build in action have silver shards slotted. The reason for that is, is silver shards gives us a little bit more weapon damage. But what we're giving up for that is, is you're giving up you're giving up pressure points. Okay, increases your weapon and spell critical ratings by 438 for each assassination ability. So you're giving up a little bit of crit. Okay, you're also giving up hemorrhage with an assassination ability slot. It increases your critical damage by 10%. This one is tricky, and there is no wrong answer here. This is, this is again, a flex spot. But remember, when we're using Shadowy Disguise, we're guaranteed a critical strike. So logically, you'd say, well, you know, you know, uh, Kara, why, why, why wouldn't I want Hemorrhage? Because I know I'm going to get a critical strike every time. I want that increased critical damage by 10%. You do. So it, unless you're building for weapon damage, which is what, I'm, what I did with this build. Now, you can drop silver shards and you're going to want to drop in either relentless focus or piercing mark now piercing mark is pretty good because what it's going to do is it's going to put a major breach on your opponent which is going to reduce their resistances um, that's good and it's a minute unless they cleanse um, but again you're going to need magicka for that okay so keep that in mind as well um, or you're going to want relentless focus which is stamina but it, it, it's, a, it's a buff on you for a minute and increases your weapon and spell damage by 60 with every light or heavy attack stacking up to five times. So you, can get, you can get another 300 weapon damage with that if you're landing light and heavy attacks. But it also gives you Spectral Bow, which is a nice little um, offensive tool. The, the thing with it is, is what I found with playing with this is, is I'm getting most of my kills off the snipe spam and then following up with a poison injection. This allows me to be pretty fluid and I can weave in light attacks as, as I need them. I don't need them a whole lot. What I really need is to get people down low in health so they're reacting on defense. But Relentless Focus or Piercing Mark, those are the two ones that you probably want to go with on this flex spot if you're going to avail yourself of the assassination. Um, line. Again, it's hard to give up hemorrhage. You're giving up pretty good damage here. But again, we're slotting silver shards because. Where is it? Oh, no, it's not that one. It is Fighter Guild. Because we're getting a 3% increase in spell and weapon damage. Okay. That's why I'm. I'm putting this because what I want to do is I want to build weapon damage because as I'll show you in the sets in a minute um, we're getting up close to 7k weapon damage on this okay so number one here's buffed here's unbuffed okay I'm going to show you something real quick you go into stealth then you come out of stealth you see how I just popped up to 5400 spell and weapon damage okay it's going to drop in a minute so 5007 stealth pop out okay that's unbuffed as well and that is coming from the vampire um, that's because I'm a vampire so you've got strike from the shadows while you're at vampire stage two or higher when you leave sneak of visibility or misform your weapon and spell damage is increased by by 300 so again every time we're using shadowy disguise we come out of it we're going up on that weapon damage and spell damage. So right now we're at 5418, okay? Now to the sets, and this is where things get crazy. So you're already at 5400. We're just going to round it, and we'll round down so we can be conservative, okay? Now the sets. I'm using a couple of sets here. The first one, we know Oaken Soul. We've already gone over that, okay? It's all 
infused weapon enchantments with, you know, uh, weapon and spell damage on there. So we're getting that maxed out on all of them. The first main set that we're using is called Red Fury Eagle's Fury. This is a very underrated set. And a lot of people don't use this. Um, there's nothing bad about this set except for the weapon skill ability increases the cost of your weapon skills by 5%. All of that, that last part of it is problematic unless you're using a bow because as we saw on the bow passives it's actually reducing your skills with the bow we're using exclusively a bow so those two kind of cancel each other out okay but we're getting 124 weapon damage 634 crit chance 124 weapon damage and adds 450 weapon and spell damage to your weapon skill abilities Period. So again, our three offensive weapons, our three offensive skills are weapon skill abilities and the bow line. So each one of these is coming off with the 5400 plus another 450. We're up to what? Well, let's round it up, round it off. Um, what are we, 5900? That's fine. That's great. Okay. We are using double dot poisons here. So we're at 5,900 with just just this, okay? Um, I, I haven't golded it out yet, but I believe if I did, I think it gets up to 470. I'm not sure. Okay, so let's say we're rounded up at like 5,900 there. Okay, but then we've got Swamp Raider. Now, Swamp Raider is a great set. You can find it. Um, I can't remember. It's where the Argonians are. I can't remember the name of it. Merkmire, I can't remember. But um, this thing, again, uh, crit chance, max stamina, um, weapon and spell damage. Six, it adds 600 weapon and spell damage to your poison and disease abilities. Okay? It's very important because our all of our skills are poison-based. Okay? So each one of the our offensive skills are poison based. Now again, if you go with, um, like we said, we were talking about assassination. If you go with a relentless focus, and you get the five light attacks, you get assassin scourge, which does disease damage. That is also buffed by swamp raiders. Okay, so swamp raiders is a kind of a must-have set for this build. Okay, and then we've got. Um, one monster set that just increases weapon and spell da damage, Molag Kina. Um, drop whatever you want in there. Um, the nice part about Red Eagle's Fury is is it's crafted. Okay, You can craft that, um, which is nice. Okay, So you've got a nice craftable set. Um, Swamp Raiders you can go get. That's part of, I don't think that's part of DLC. You can just go grind that out. Um, so you've really got a couple of sets here that are fairly easy to get that are going to get you up around 6,500 to 7k. It really depends on if you've if you've captured a keep, you get a buff for that. That increases your um, your weapon damage. If you've um, it depends on what scrolls your alliance has. So you can get up around between 6,500 and 7k weapon damage on this build that apply exclusively to the shots that you're taking from the bow. This this build hits hard. Now, Snipe has gotten a lot of nerfs over the years, but I'm still getting 8 to 10k hits with this thing. Okay, I was getting huge hits before with the same build. I've been playing this build with these sets now um, for a long time. Now, before Oak and Soul came out, um, I had... I had two, I had another, I had a head here that just had another um, stack of weapon and spell damage, okay? And then I, but I still used um, Red Eagle's Fury and um, Swamp Raiders. I had a, I had another ring of Red Eagle's Fury. Um, this is, it's not overpowered, but it's going to give you enough to, to, to move around to do a really, really good damage 
Now, the problem here is, is you are going to be squishy. You are a vampire, so you got to stay out of siege because you will burn and die. But um, you see, if you see anybody under 25k health or under like 26, 27k health, you can usually two shot or three shot them pretty easily, and it's not going to be a problem for you to get two shots, three shots into them with this build because you can move around pretty good. You can get into stealth pretty good. Um, Overall, it's a pretty solid uh, bow build. There are definitely better night blades out there. There are better builds out there. But for a bow build, this one's actually pretty solid. Now, I've tested a whole bunch of other sets. I've tested Marksman. I've tested Archer's Mind, where you just, you know, it's all crit. Um, I've even got Leviathan to increase the crit. Um, I've tried Play Plague Break, which actually is pretty good, too. Um... Uh, you name it, I've I've tried it. Um, I've tried having slime craw on. I've tried um, spriggans. I've tried tritonborn. Um, you name it, I've tried it. And this one is the most consistent performer. I'm constantly getting really good weapon damage. I'm getting really good hits on this as well. Um, the CP, it's really. You know, green is green. You can figure out what you want there. I mean, Deadly Aim increases your damage done with single target attacks by 3%. Everything that we're doing is single target here. There's no AoE. Uh, Master at Arms increases your damage done with direct damage attacks by 3%. Everything we're doing is pretty much direct damage. Increases offensive penetration. We are trying to build for penetration. That's the secondary stat. We do have the Lover Mundus, and we have all uh, Divines on our... On our um, armor so we can maximize penetration which i think we're up around 12k which is decent it's not great but you know we're, we're doing what we can um and then wrathful strikes grants 41 weapon and spell damage to your damaging abilities per stage that's we're getting an additional 200 weapon and spell damage there the whole point of blue line for me is to increase the, the damage of of each particular shot and, and i'm also getting um I'm getting more penetration and I'm getting more weapon and spell damage. So weapon damage is the primary stat I want to build into and then penetration is number two. Now you can use defensive um, uh, blue blue line items here. I, I think they're, they're down here. Um, yeah, you've got repost. You've got um, you've, yeah, uh, enduring resolve which reduces the damage you take. It's really up to you what you feel comfortable with. I'm all offense on this particular build. My defense is coming from my ability to stealth and my ability to pick targets through experience. So there's that. Red is just red. Um, you increase your movement speed. That's what I usually try to get out of red. I'm increasing my movement speed bonus. Um, Bastion isn't bad. Bastion is really it is actually decent because what it does is... It increases your damage shield, but it, it it also increases the damage you're doing against shielded enemies. And believe me, this helps with Sorks a lot, because there, there's, there's still a lot of Sorks out there that are using shields. And you're also getting more and more Wardens that are using their, their Ice Shield as well. So Bastion's definitely something you want to pop on this build. Um, and then these are just two pickums, really. You, whatever you want to uh, use. I... I I grabbed Bondless Vitality because any place that you can get a little bit more health on this build is good. Um, and Rejuvenation, this one is just a little bit extra regen, nothing huge here. I'm not going to go into all the little sub uh, pieces of each one of the, the CPs. You can figure that out on your own. Those are the, the major ones. And like I said, green is green, but we'll do it real quickly. Sustaining Shadow, reduce the cost of Sneak by 1% per stage. That's actually pretty big for a night blade. Uh, you definitely want to grab that. Steed's blessing increase your out of combat movement speed on the steed. You, why wouldn't you pick that one? Gift rider increase your mount speed by two percent. Again, why wouldn't you? And then rationer adds ten minutes to your, the duration of any food or drink that increases your character stats. Um, those four are all pretty straightforward. If you're doing a PvP build, if you're a PVE player, you're gonna get more out of the green line uh, with other with other items okay but this is all just P pure PvP and those are the uh, this uh, there's nothing better than that than these four for the, for the PvP 
So I think that's a pretty thorough walkthrough of everything that I'm doing here with this build. As you can see, my health is down, so I need to eat a f some food. And I'll show you the stats one more time before I drop here. Um, get a heal. So what are we at? We're at about 25k health. I think we, we round out at 24 point five twenty six it really depends if a warden's around we'll get minor minor toughness which you know bumps us up a little bit we will get uh Elliot wells which we'll definitely take advantage of and then it really depends you know are you near a keep did you just take a keep the thing about cyrodiil is that some of the buffs are pretty fluid it really depends on you know does your faction have any scroll bonuses um you know what's going on you, you do have um Battle Spirit, which, you know, you, you're getting uh, ability range of 28 meters or more, increased by 8. Uh, damage taken in shield strength are decreased by 50%. Um, there's all sorts of moving parts to Cyrodiil. It really depends if you're playing in a group, you're going to get buffs from them. Are you going to do Oak and Soul, or are you going to do a 2-bar build? Um, it really all depends. So... The only other thing I have to add here is are the pots. Um, these are the ones that you get just for playing. If you log in, you get tri tripods. Tripods are always the best if you can afford them. Um, you can buy them on the market. There's plenty of people that sell them. They're pretty expensive, but um, these tripods that you get from the crown crown rewards for just logging in, these are these are great all arounders. And then you've got the alliance. Um, Droughts, what they're called. So this one's just the quick stamina. This one's the quick um, uh, magicka. Okay, um, you don't really need more than that because I'm gonna be honest with you here. If you get caught on this build by anybody with decent DPS, you're probably gonna die. Now it doesn't mean that you can't get away. That's why we we have stealth. Okay. We can get away, all right? That's where these pots come in handy because, you know, you've, you've got... Um, you can go into Cloak probably three or four times. You know, that's five or six right there, okay? Um, that should be... If you can't get away from um, a Pursuer on four or five Cloaks... You're probably going to die. A pot might save you. You might get another two cloaks out of it. But if you've got like a group on you and they're hot and heavy, um, don't waste your pot. Take the death. But you can get away. That's why I don't spend a lot of money on tripods, etc. The tripods I do have, I use those. If my health gets really low, I use a tripod. And then it just, you know, it, I get stamina and magicka. But for the most part, I'm using magicka pots because... That's what goes down the fastest. So lastly on this build, one of the things that I do use is I use double dot poisons. Okay, poison damage is buffed on this build as we saw through Swamp Raider. Um, this is a nice little little dot on, um, on, on basically everybody. And it spawns from your weapon abilities, which again, we're using almost all weapon abilities or offensive uh, attacks on this build. So you definitely, why wouldn't you want that? Now it is suppressing, let's let's actually look at that a little bit more. So it is suppressing um, the weapon damage enchantment. Now what that means is, is I am giving up weapon damage for this. So if I took that off, I could actually buff, that's, I could get this probably closer to 7k weapon damage. Okay, I would be hitting harder. Let's take those off for a minute. So, you know, I've got the sharpened trait, and I've got another 340 weapon damage that I'm going to get by um, activating that enchantment. Again, with all the other buffs that we had that we discussed earlier, you can get up to 7k weapon damage on this build. I like the double dot poisons because I want to put dots on people and just make sure that they're poisoned, make sure that they've got, <laughs> you know, issues. They can't just get into stealth and run away. They have to deal with my poison. That's the point here. But 
there's some room here. You can inc you get that weapon damage up to 7k, and believe me, you're going to do some incredible hits. Anyways, um, like I said at the beginning, this was an in-depth dive into a bow knight blade in Cyrodiil. You've seen now everything, all of my thinking, all of my logic, all the, the things that I do on this build. I only play a bow on this build. I never go to two-handed or, or dual wield. It's not a melee character. It is just a bow hunter. And I'm doing pretty good on it. I've gotten plenty of kills. I've been playing this for years and years this way. There is live gameplay of me playing this build. I'm going to link to three different live streams that you can check out at your leisure. They're, each one of them is about an hour long. It's not constant action, but each one of them has the highs and lows of this particular build. You're going to see some really cool kills in there. Um, some of them that I really pulled a rabbit out of my ass for. And then you're going to see some, some times where um, I get run over and die. But there is... Uh, there is footage of me playing this build, so it's not just some guy throwing out a build and just saying, hey, this is what I do, and you never get to see him play it. It's there if you want to see it. Anyways, uh, let me say thank you for taking your time to watch my content. If you got this far, um, I really appreciate it, because I know this was a long video and I covered a lot of stuff, but I wanted to give you a really deep dive into the build of this Nightblade. I know a lot of content creators for ESO, they give you a really short version of the builds, which is cool. I know some people want that, but I think it's good when you take your time and explain the reasoning and the logic for the choices that you make. You might make different choices, and that's cool. And if you do, let me know in the comments below. Anyways, thanks for taking your time to watch my content. I really appreciate it, and I'll talk to you again soon.